Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope you've had a good week and that fall has found you the way to, the way it's found us. Our we're down into the 80s here and we're loving life. Yes. I can hear kids outside because it's not 100 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> it's so nice. Yes. Hope everybody else is enjoying good weather as well. Well, have you guys heard about Ever? What Terry's new 72 page graphic novel being released in November. You can order the soft cover from your retailer. It's $17.99. Um, or you can pre order the hard cover, which is $27.99, from our website starting Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time. If you pre order the hard cover from us, you will also receive a signed print. Nice. So that's exciting. I hope I get one of those. <laughs> the hardcover is only available through us. Uh, the first printing will be a thousand copies. Uh, it's going to be kind of like the Echo hardcover where we did one printing and that was it. Mm -hmm. And we're probably going to reprint the hardcover of the Echo in the next year or so. But it'll. But that book came out ten years ago. So reprint the hardcover of Echo. Echo. Okay. Uh, so. The hardcovers are not reprinted frequently, just so you know. True. Because um, they're a big deal to print. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah. So, it, and it will ship in mid-November, so if you're interested in purchasing one, uh, the website will have it up Monday, uh, October 12th at 10 a.m. That's so cool. I, I'm on schedule to finish this by about at least February or March. So... <laughs> Um, it will ship in November, even if I have to finish it myself. It'll be great to have uh, the book out so that I can just copy it and finish the pages I need to finish. <laughs> yeah, you guys are all going to have a, a individual sketches in the back of each book because he's, he won't have finished in time. It'll be 25 blank pages. So, Terry, you're going to share a couple of um, <clears throat> uh, pages today to give them a little preview? Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, I think it's good because it's taking so long. I think it's a good idea for you guys to kind of keep up. They don't know what they're purchasing. I know this. This could be, you know, this. And trust me, people, this is his one and only graphic novel. <laughs> it has not been pleasant around here. <laughs> it's been. It's just work to you. Uh, to, there's. It's hard for me to see the end. Um, you know, having the goal be too far out. So it's been a little crazy for me. It's not what I'm used to. No, it's not. And he reminds me of that every day. <laughs> so anyway, that will be available beginning Monday, October 12th, 10 a.m., $27.99, plus shipping. Okay. Hit the website. Yeah. Okay. Also, Terry Moore Live is coming up on October 23rd through the 25th. It'll be a fun weekend with uh, some sketches, some original art. You're going to do some live signings mm -hmm. and panels. Live chats. And some giveaways. I like the live chats because um, it's my way of talking to the people that come to see us in the different cities. We miss you, you know, our, our regulars and our friends. Um, so it'd be great to see you there online, at least connect. I got to do a Zoom call with four buddies from the East Coast who usually show up at shows. Man, it was so good to see them and just chat, you know. So I'm looking forward to this. Good. And we'll begin taking 10 issue subscriptions, U.S. only, sorry, uh, for Terry's new series beginning in January called Serial. Serial. S-E-R-I-A-L. It stars everyone's favorite 10-year-old, Zoe, from Rachel Rising. Oh, sweet child. So plan to spend some time with us that weekend. Uh, we're going to take subscriptions for Serial. It's going to be a 10-issue series, so it'll be for 10 issues, U.S. only. Um, My usual story. It's going to be story. about $65 for the 10 issues. Okay. And, oh, and we stop taking subscriptions when that first issue ships. Oh. So you have, a, then you have about six weeks to subscribe if you want to subscribe. And then all bets are off. No more subscriptions. Wow, you really have to be in the loop to get yeah. in on the subscriptions. Yeah. Um, so keep that in mind. That'll go up on October 23rd. Uh, there's, no there's no rush to do it that day. You just need to do it before the, subscription, uh, before the book ships. Okay. So we'll be able to tell who's not watching our videos, our weekly updates. 
<laughs> when they come well, back Well, you're going to tweet. You're going to social media all that, too. Maybe I will, and maybe I won't. You will. Okay, so now to all of our international friends. As you know, we've had endless problems with the UPS, USPS since the pandemic began. With much research and endless conversations with USPS, I think we have come up with a solution. It seems that when an item is over a certain weight, like the Rachel Rising omnibus, mm -hmm. it's held up in customs on both ends. And then it just gets pushed aside, lost, goes all over everywhere. And, and many times we never find it. Uh, if it's over a certain dollar amount, which is a, seems to be about $50, it's also held up. So if you order, please keep that in mind. We're going to reopen the international orders, but keep that in mind. All sketches and all original art will now be sent FedEx, which is expensive, but it's the only way to get it there safely. Mm -hmm. uh, if you place a big order, like a Rachel Rising Omnibus or a SIP Omnibus or something like that, or anything that's over about $50, we'll have to reconfigure how we're going to ship it. Uh, it may have to go DHL, it may have to go FedEx, uh, but keep that in mind. We will make a note on the, on the, in the cart so that you are aware that Shipping is an issue. You've now entered the yeah. different type of shipping zone. Yeah. So, um, okay. Wow. Well, I'm glad you have an answer, a definitive answer about what it is that well, gets. A that's all we can trend. come up with. Yeah. But I don't know that know. that's a definitive answer. Well, I mean, at least you know, well, you know, how it's sorted. Well, you think as much as it costs to ship, to ship one comic book is like $16. Gosh. You think they could get it there, right. you know, to ship, uh, like for instance, to ship this um, ever uh, graphic novel is going to be twenty three fifty. The book is only seventeen ninety nine in soft cover. Mm -hmm. uh, you think they could get a figure out a better system, but for now, this is what we're dealing with. So, bear with us on it. We're doing the best we can. Um, this is why companies like to have an office in both continents. <laughs> uh, we should have a European office that has a batch and hubs out from there. I wish. I Maybe don't. someday when we're huge. I don't need that much trouble. <laughs> you have to run both offices. Yeah. Did I mention the other office would be in Paris? <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Okay, okay. Okay, also, I wanted to offer some new merchandise. Does anyone have any good ideas or fun things they'd like to see? I like the comic book boxes that are printed with the images from your books, you know, but I think they'd be a nightmare to ship hmm. because they're, they're, a lot of cracking. they're yeah. comic book boxes. Splitting. Right. Hmm. So any other suggestions, let me know. Maybe we can come up with some fun things. Diamonds are nice. Jewelry. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Uh, no. When, when we think about um, merchandise and things like that, we usually, um, you know, things... A lot of pocket materials used to be popular, like lighters and things like that, but nobody uses them anymore. What? What is that? 1947? No, I'm thinking about uh, Fantagraphics had a great merchandise line at one point with well, like what? That was 30 years stuff. ago. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> Trying to think of something a little more current. Football. <laughs> okay, I'll try harder. Okay, let's let's move on from that. That. We could do pencils. Okay, let's get on the hot seat. Okay. $23 to ship a pencil to Europe. <laughs> okay, your first question <clears throat> is from Tom Wallace. Hi, Tom. Um, and this is relevant because I have some news to add about this. I'm wondering if Terry would consider creating a How to Draw Comics, the Terry Moore Way book that might explain in detail every step of his creative process from idea brainstorming to writing, penciling, inking, lettering, publishing, and everything in between. Down to the fine details, such as what exact brand of ink he prefers. How to clean up um, a scanned piece of art to remove all the little artifacts, etc., etc. I think having a resource like that would be an invaluable to creators. Just a thought. Thanks again for all the content all you all have been putting out there, and have a great day. So, we did have a book called Terry Moore's How to Draw, mm -hmm. and it is now out of print. We tried to make a new Terry Moore How to Draw book. Mm -hmm. which could not get printed properly. But 
We are going to release that book. It's going to be solicited in the February previews. Um, so that would be for March release. Is that right? Yes. And it's not going to be lay flat. It's going to be a regular book. Uh, February for March, February for April. Anyway, it's coming out in the February previews. Okay. But we're going to release the, the, um, the new How to Draw book. It's expanded. The ex the, yeah. The extended version mm -hmm. will be released in a regular perfect bound format. Mm -hmm. It will not be lay flat. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. It'll be in February previews and out shortly after that. So thank you, Tom. Yeah, Tom. And it has, you know, so much of the, all, what you're talking about is in there, uh, including my, my page template sizes and things like that. And uh, in terms of like small details, um, it would be quite a project to think of a comprehensive list and get it all in one book. I would love to, to make that book. That would be very time consuming. Hopefully these videos have been providing nice insights into the small details. It gives me a chance to tell you about, oh, I just always use this thing right here. You know, so between the book and these videos, and we're revealing a lot. They know everything about you. Almost. I, I keep the, uh, there's a little box that I keep hidden with all my secret stuff in there. Oh, so. hey, you guys don't worry about it. I'm going to find that little box. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I hit it well. <laughs> okay, your second question is from Terrence Cassell. He asks, what do you do if you find a mistake in either your artwork or writing after it's been published? Would you try to correct it in future printings? And he notates one. Oh, Echo Complete Edition Hardcover, page 503. Can you spot the error in Dylan's shirt? So everybody go look in your Echo okay. book. So what do you do if you find an error? Um, I, I note it, and I hope hopefully I find it <coughs> in the single issue, and then I'll fix it for the trade. And then if I see the problem in the trade, it got by me in the singles, then I'll fix it for the omnibus. And what I consider to be the definitive final printing is the omnibus so so if there's an error in the omnibus screw it if, yeah <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be fixed by the omnibus if, well clearly in echo it was not maybe there's a reason maybe that's alternative universe dylan <laughs> <laughs> now i'll just start making excuses i yeah it, it, sometimes it does get away from me if you'll notice uh well if uh, hopefully if you don't notice i but i do struggle to make sure continuity is good. And Robin helps me a lot with that. But between the two of us, sometimes something will get by. And that's the reason why I don't often put a lot of um, bling on my characters. There's not a lot of jewelry or things like that. Even though I'm pretty positive that Gachu would have more than one ring on her hands. Um, but I, I don't wanna, you know, half the book has them, half the book doesn't. Sometimes he'll have <laughs> On page 10, all the jewelry. Page 11, no jewelry. No 12, jewelry. all the jewelry. Page 13, no jewelry. Yeah, well, she took them off between pages, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's funny to, to keep that continuity going. And that's one of the things that editors do for their creators. Because uh, the creator gets focused on something else and totally forgets about, oh, they're supposed to be an iguana at their feet on every panel. Uh, you forgot it. So, Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, love these questions. You guys keep yeah, them coming. Those are good questions. You can email me at mail at abstractstudiocomics.com. Mm -hmm. Terry's happy to answer them. Yeah. It's fun to catch him off guard. I'm, I'm happy to lie my way through this. Okay, so what are you drawing to say today besides ever? Uh, well, one of the things that's fun for artists to do is to uh, draw one character in a lot of poses, and you'll see that a lot. You'll see somebody, a page filled with... The one person in all kinds of poses and, and stances and uh, both a, both um, appealing and non-appealing. So I thought maybe we would do that today. Take one character and draw them in as many uh, poses as we can think of, you know, in a short period of time. And uh, see how you handle a character. Why don't you draw ever in as many poses as you can think of ever. on a page <laughs> to add to the book? Yeah, so I can put it in the book, in the back of the book, because I'm going to have 45 blank pages at the back of the book. <laughs> That'll be one ever sketch on each page. 
Okay, that's it for me. I'm going to I'm getting ready to cook a whole salmon fillet on a cedar plank on the grill this afternoon. So I have got to go do some prep work for that. It is so delicious. You have to go catch a salmon. I'm really just looking for an excuse to be outside. So you guys have a great week. We'll see you back here next Sunday and take care. Okay, maybe here. If I was going through uh, a bunch of just uh, sketch poses of ever, um, this is about as much as I would draw the face in the original in the beginning um, and then I'm just going through my body hinge points those two shoulder points I've already established a perspective clearly we are uh, looking down like this on the perspective um, so which means the body is going to disappear into a cone like this right so now you're just measuring off waist the bottom of the trunk knees ankle, feet, see? Um, the wrists go to here, to the crotch. The um, the elbow joints are, are right here, uh, right above the, between the navel and that cavity. Why do I always do that? Well, every time I draw the ribs, I always draw this plate, the connecting plate on the ribs. I don't know why I do that. Maybe it's just, um, maybe I'm trying to look for the center point or something. And every time I draw it, I think about that's the part that they get the, uh, that's the part they crack open and then they pull the ribs apart to get to your heart. Your heart is right underneath that. Um, I don't know, it's funny what sticks with you, isn't it? Now I'm cheating, and I'm changing my whole my whole drawing. So, can you see my drawing is a mess in there, right? Here's what I see. If I come in and ink, This pen is giving out on me. That was happening to me last week. I was drawing and pens and pencils were giving out on me. My pencil kept running out of lead. Okay, you can see that I am not exactly following my pencils because the pencil was always just a guide and a lot of times all I need is just that that rough end and then I'll fix it from there she has long hair but we're going to stop it right here for right now just for clarity's sake okay now see this mess In the middle of all that messy pencil, this is what I saw. And that's how I would ink it. Um, so the pencil becomes the guidelines and then first it helps you, you know what you want in these areas uh, already mentally. And then the pencil is just helping you dial it in. So it's like the, like the Terry draw square. So I'm do, I do this. Okay, I think I have my square. That's how the pencil is for me. Um, and it should be the same way for you, I think. I would encourage you to try it this way because um, it allows you 
I'm going to keep, keep going with figures here. Um, it allows you to dial stuff in instead of and get away from this um, terrible thing of I have to draw it perfectly first time. Um, if it's not perfect, I'm not moving on to the next area until I get this area perfect. Um, Okay, guys, look, see, you can tell that this is not a polished pencil. Look how rough all these lines are. But you can also see the, the figure, the form. So we're going to throw this away. Because <laughs> that one is clearly shot. This will work. Um, okay, so... See how rough all these lines are, but you can tell that what we want is in there. Um, so I'm going to speed this part up uh, because it took me uh, it took a while to to draw this. I kind of took my time, and I am looking at the pencils and figuring out the angles of well, there are the two shoulder blades, and then the hip, the top and the bottom of the hip joint. On the uh, part where the hip goes up, of course, it will be squeezing the flesh on the side. Uh, so it depends on your body fat uh, ratio as to whether or not you have creases there. And then getting the uh, curvature of the, the butt cheeks uh, it really says a lot about the body type. And then the, um, the shading and what is... Uh, prominent to the overhead lighting and what is uh, in the shadows is very important. Sometimes you don't see that in the inking though. And here I just wanted to show that the position of the head has so much to do with what body you're going to be drawing. If the head is down, uh, there's a set of body poses that kind of match that. If the head is up, you have freedom to do different poses. So. Um, I'm kind of trying to show you here that to have your arms up or hand out to shake hands or arms akimbo, there's a certain type of head positioning that kind of matches that and it, your whole sketch really kind of starts with the angle of the head. Um, sometimes we learn how to draw a character a certain way like chest out, but what if they're tired and it's chest in? Um, that's something that you need to take into account. And especially like in the female form where you learn the busty figure one way, but what if they're slumped over? Now how do you draw your busty figure and make it realistic? So these are the kind of things you can learn and teach yourself in sketching. Um, it makes all the difference. It's the same body, uh, but one side is um, just as important as the other. You need to be able to draw both ways. I'd like to point out at this point that notice that I drew generic human beings first and then assigned the sex. Um, even on ever here, it was just a head and a skeleton uh, body form, and you couldn't tell if that's male or female. Uh, it's only when I start putting in the, the face and the figure that I start delineating the sex. Um, I say this all the time and people look at me funny that I draw human beings first and then I assign the, the gender or whatever uh, that they want. Um, but it's true. I mean, here's a drawing of, say, another drawing of a thicker figure. Well, this could end up being Batman or it could end up being a fat guy or it could be a, a, a woman. Um, you know, you, you kind of build on top of a, a human form. So when I'm working on my book and the storytelling, um, I draw these characters in that generic format first, and then I go in and uh, assign the body types and everything else. And that allows me to be more free when I'm figuring out, you know, these difficult, unusual poses, lying down, brushing your hair away, things that make you human. Um, just remember that when you're uh, trying to uh, look for the freedom to draw whatever you want to draw. 
start with the simplest form possible, just the human form, and then add your particular personality to it.